Hello, welcome to The Ref Show. You know, some of you, I think, suspect that if referees have a good weekend, we don't enjoy it on this show. That's far from the truth. You know, Keith Hackett here, uh, old guy, always likes to complain and moan. You've got nothing to complain and moan about this week, have you, Keith? No, but I you think... enjoy that, though, don't you? Well, Not I, having anything I, to moan I, about. I think we've been saying for months, haven't we, here, that the younger guys have got to be given a chance. And so they the have. And, and so they've they delivered. Have. Right, we'll you know, go into I, I've said how impressed I am with uh, young Chris Cavana. Again, I think uh, he was given a big game in, in his yeah. eyes. It's probably the biggest game he's ever had at Arsenal. Yes, it was a little bit one-sided, but that's not for him to decide what the game and how it's going to shape. What he did was delivered a performance. Which and leaves us, little, to, yeah. which leaves us, sorry, Keith, talking sorry. about talking about football with Gary Megson. Did, yeah. did you enjoy your football weekend? Yeah, it was okay. Like you know, in, in terms of um, the refereeing and all that, I, I, I think there's a lot to, that's now being looked at and it changes so quickly because now it's become about how they're using this VAR and do we bring it into everything and like can we yeah. do it better and all that and it's like it's such a change it's like I think it's a great step forward but it's going to take a little bit of time to get everything spot on. We haven't got too many live errors to talk about we have got some very positive things to talk about so we will talk <laughs> about VARs as well and, th and mm. throw that in mm. just on principle forgetting the individual incidents of this past week and where it's gone right and where it's gone wrong are you happy with it or not? Would you uh, like it in the game or not? I think not? it's it's like everything. It's like you know, it's just started. Yeah. And it's certainly now a sport, so it's just started, and, and now it's the, getting used to it and like you know, adapting it and making it better. But it's it's so unfair when a referee makes an advantage a, a, a decision. He hasn't got the advantage of fourteen cameras like everybody else has yeah. got that they keep playing and playing and playing. So it's got to be the way forward to bring it in. But you're only as good as the, the VAR if it has to be referred to, or if he comes yeah. in, yeah. and if he gets it wrong as well, which you can do on a subjective. Well, I, I mean, absolutely, position. it's subjective. Yeah, isn't it? I still, I still think the criteria is too tight, uh, and it ought just to open up. For me, the biggest negative is a lack of information to the spectator mm. of what is going off. I mean, there's this confusion that the only signal was, I'm, I'm, I've got my finger to my ear, uh, I'm listening to something, which is not necessarily applying the ear, it's someone communicating to him, uh, and then he does that. Well, mm. I think you need to do that straight away. Straight away. And say, right. look, there's, there's a comment and I'm reviewing it. Do we really need to know what the process is? You know, if you're saying the VAR is an extra official, he's the same as an assistant referee. So do we really know that it's gone to him or he's involved? I think we can or avoid not? it. I think the only time, uh, Alan, is when it's going to take much longer. I think in fairness, mm. the decisions that have been made have been ones that are pretty quick to come to, to a decision. I think it's when you get into the realms of mistaken identity, which is rare, but it will happen, or you have a mass confrontation and you're trying to sort out the number of players. Mm. If we think back to the Carling Cup years ago with Webb, yeah. Howard Webb in the middle. In Arsenal, the 90, Chelsea? Arsenal, yeah, Chelsea. 91st yeah. minute, he had three players to dismiss. Uh, and that would have taken time, as it took time in that occasion. So yeah, and you yeah. had an Old Trafford brawl once too, mm. concerned I'd, with this. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've been advocating younger referees getting some good young referees getting more games in the Premier League. Maybe somebody's listening because Paul Tierney and Chris Kavanagh, for instance, were both on the list at the weekend. Tierney, Manchester City three, Newcastle one. And Kavanagh was Arsenal 4, Crystal Palace 1. Um, mm. Only minor things. I, I think the thing criticized. now is that, look, we, we've got VAR potentially coming in next season. I should a little bit about who the VARs are going to be because I think ultimately they've got to make some pretty tough calls and they've got to make them accurately. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, the, the spectator will be uh, unforgiving. But I, I think there's now a group of referees beginning to form in, in the Championship David Coote, Andrew Madley, uh, Peter Banks, are, are probably ones that they should now bring on. They should say, right, okay, next season, we, you know, this is what we're going to do. You're going to move into SG1 and give them, you know, a view and use them as fourth officials. To get them in the environment. To get them into the environment now. All right. And stop using the, the <clears throat> SG1 referees yeah. as fourth officials on the Premier League. Okay, so Tierney uh, had Manchester City's win. Kavanagh had Arsenal's win. I, I know that you felt that uh, 
There should have been a, a penalty. Arsenal should have had an opportunity for a fifth goal with a penalty, which wasn't given. Um, Lee Probert. Um, now, he, he had uh, a, a clean sheet, I think. I don't, I don't think there was a single uh, card in his, in his game, as there wasn't um, either in Chris Kavanagh's game. I don't mm. think there was a yellow card in either of those, so they'll, they'll be quite happy about that. Um, Lee Probert's game, Leicester 2, Watford 0, following which, bringing Gary in here, Marco Silva gets sacked as Watford manager. Did you see that coming? The timing surprised a few people. Um, no, I didn't see it coming. It's, um, you know, the, and they've turned around and they've, they've blamed Everton, Everton, which is like you know, a churlish thing to me. And, and I think it's just trying to mask over what uh, the decision that they've made. But in terms of, if, if you're in that premiership now and you're getting close towards that relegation, then you, you're going to be struggling, you're going to be looking over your shoulder. And regardless of what's gone on previously, they were on the slide. There's quite a few others. All the teams that came up last year mm -hmm. and they were doing okay, as suddenly you get to that second half of the season, it starts dropping off a little bit because your team, when you first get promoted, is everything's enthusiastic and you're up for it and like everything's brand new. All of a sudden you get used to it. Now it comes down to the players you've got compared to everybody else's. And everybody else, you look at Manchester United, they're already a top team. They go and sign one of the best players in the world in January. Mm -hmm. Most people can't do that. They're all starting to come Huddersfield down. Huddersfield are starting to So, so are Brighton um, and so are Newcastle. They're all starting to come back yeah. into that bottom three. And Watford were going down towards that. But Watford have been running the club maybe a little bit differently for a while now. They, they yeah. seem to be like, you know, a manager will be doing okay. And then all of a sudden they just say, you know, that's it, we're going to have a change. And, and they run it differently because I think they've got the guys, Scott Duxbury signing players or right. bringing players in. So they run it and maybe it's a bit differently to most. It looks I mean, chaotic, I mean, but they, it seems yeah. to work. It seems to work over the years. Sorry. Can yeah, well, I, yeah. I thought it was amazing that uh, they, they blamed Everton. Yeah. And then this morning, the guy's on the job. Yes, I've got a new manager. I, you, you, you've all, you probably, so, you know, in business, you don't, you don't one night at a point and then the next minute he appears. It oh. all seems a bit yeah, that they, already they, preconceived and They were sort of suggesting done. that they'd unsettled the manager by, you know, Everton making overtures. But well, I would have thought that that's a big fillip, though. You know, if they've taken a, a manager from, you know, he got relegated, they went to the championship. Yeah. They take him there and, it, and then set off really, really well. They looked yeah. a terrific side yeah. at the beginning of the season. Um, Deeney's been left out, which I'm sure has probably had some impact on the, the whole club itself. Mm. But, uh, you know, to then turn around and blame another club, I would have thought that, you know, that, that should give you a lift as opposed to, like, be a downer on you. You'd have thought so, wouldn't mm. you? Um, let's uh, conclude part one. Um, we've got chap some championship incidents, football league incidents to talk about in part two. Let's conclude where we, well, going back to where we started with VAR, because we've got an incident uh, in the Brighton-Chelsea game. OK, it was 4-0, it was a clear victory for, 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 for Chelsea. But Brighton claimed they were denied a couple of penalties when they were just 2-0 down. So the first one, I think you felt was clear, foul mm. by the keeper. Yeah. Um, um, John Moss was the referee. You said to me over the weekend, well, VAR would have sorted that. Yes. Well, I, I think it would. I, you know, I think John Moss, he's, he's caught out of position mm. slightly. And he's, got, he's looking through players. You can't guess these decisions. So credit to him for not guessing. Mm. But a big down on the assistant referee because the assistant referee's got to have got an absolutely open door view of that particular decision. And John Moss should have expected some support to get him out of jail on that one. He didn't get it. Right. Second one was just a matter of opinion, really, and I, I don't think it really was as much of a case, was there, no. for Brighton. But you say the VAR would have sorted it. We had an occasion during the week, the FA Cup uh, replay between Chelsea and Norwich, where the VAR, who was Mike Jones, didn't sort it. Well, I've uh, said all along, the quality of the VAR is important. Whoever's sat in front of the screen has got to be an informed referee of some quality to make the big calls. Now, I, I think that in this situation, he's, you know, some, he's, he's not a referee who's a confident official, and I don't think that's a good job for him. Right. You don't think he's suited to it temperamentally, perhaps? Because it's a pressure job, isn't it? I mean, I you're not even at the stadium. Job, you're, but everybody's you know, I, waiting for you. I'm, I'm, I'll be as, as blunt as I possibly can. Mike Jones is a really nice guy, right? If I was the referee and he was the VER, I'd worry. Well, 
Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you can't put it, you can't put it <laughs> more strongly no. than that, really. <laughs> so whoever selected, and he, I mean, Mike Jones has been a very good referee for a long time, OK? Uh, in terms of the fact that he got to the Premier League. Yeah. And you don't get to the Premier League without being a good referee, do you? Um, I think there were, well, you shouldn't do. But right. then that was on the form that he had. Yeah. You know, you can say that of Andrew Madley, you can say that of, of, of Craig Pawson. But the, the problem is that what I see is happening is that these guys are getting to that SG1, we're now a professional referee, we've got the contract, and, and what they do is they stop learning. Right, okay. You know, every, every game that you go out, you've got to use that as a learning curve. And if you, if you take your view, life's happy and you're comfortable and, mm. and you, you're leveling off, that's the point of regression mm. in performance. Strong words from Keith. Certainly, Mike Jones has been mentioned in terms of mistakes more often than, than most Premier League referees. Look at the number but of appointments he's had on the Premier League. I think Oliver's had around about 20. And I think Mike Jones might have had about 11. Mm. Does that tell its own story? I don't know. You decide that. <laughs> we'll be back for part two with Gary and uh, Keith. See you then. Mm.